A good afternoon and welcome back after a long Memorial weekend. Uh, we obviously have a short week in trading after the holiday, but uh, plenty to cover this week, that is for sure. My name is Brandon Steele, financial advisor with Main Sale Financial Group here in Bellevue. And our goal every Thursday is to bring to you the market news, data, trends that we're watching, hopefully weed out a bit of the noise along the way. Uh, before we jump into it, obviously, we do have a little shorter week in trading, at least this week, with Monday being a holiday. Um, so I hope everybody had a great Memorial weekend to kind of kick off uh, the summer months here. And uh, if you're in the Pacific Northwest, it was amazing weather, at least in the afternoon. So hopefully you were able to get outside and enjoy. Um, this week is really all about, let's say, the Fed again. Uh, the, the, it's basically inflation and jobs and what that means for the Fed. We'll also cover in our question of the week a little bit more on the debt ceiling as we get closer and closer to this so-called X date, which I'll share a little bit more about here in a little bit. Um, before we get into the core, though, I want to touch briefly on some data points last Friday. Last Friday, we had income and spending numbers come out, and both were up pretty significantly, actually, for the month. So, um, you know, interesting to see that in a period where maybe there was some some concerns whether the consumer was still strong. Uh, here we go with income and spending showing that that may in fact be the case. But more importantly, last Friday, we had PCE numbers come out and this is a measurement of inflation. And in fact, the measurement that the Fed is really continuing to focus on, it keeps mentioning through their meetings. So Friday, we had uh, core PCE and PCE data come out and in fact, they both came out higher than expected and um, actually even ticked up the year over year numbers. So both came out at a 0.4% increase for the month. Um, and this increased the year over year inflation data points on PCE more than core PCE, but also on core PCE. And again, these are inflation data points. The core part of it essentially takes out um, things like food and, and energy is maybe the best way to think about it. Obviously, those are a little more volatile. So the idea of the core PCE numbers is it may be a little bit more of a uh, steady view on where inflation is actually going and how things are, are impacted. Uh, of course, you and I all feel the uh, the the higher number regardless, but but the idea I think for why the Fed watches it is to try and take out some of those more volatile data points along the way. So again, this is the number that the Fed is watching very very closely. Um, it came in above expectations, and that is very important. <laughs> um, although all this is the case, you know, here we were on Friday, and the market seemed to just entirely shrug it off. Um, obviously, there's a lot of focus around the debt ceiling, which we'll touch on in our question. But uh, but I think there was some good news there. And what we're, what we saw was the, the the market said, who cares about inflation? All we care about is this potential good news on the debt ceiling front. That said, there is a big difference right now in terms of how the stock market and the bond market are looking at the two. Um, you may have heard this term. They typically say the stock market is the dumb money. The bond market is the smart money. Uh, that's not entirely true. So take that with a grain of salt. But it is important to, to share this because the bond market is pricing in a completely different scenario right now than the stock market, uh, at least around the Fed anyways. Right now, uh, and this is new too, the bond market is pricing in another rate hike this year. Uh, prior to this inflation data point, that was not the case. Uh, so, you know, it's really important to kind of pay attention to this because if that does come to be, and especially in the June meeting, which now I'm feeling more and more likely that that may be the case, um, you know, this this really could surprise markets a little bit, at least for the short run. And remember, prior to this recent data point, really there was no rate hikes factored in or priced in in any markets. So this is really important and a, a bit of a new trend after the data point Friday. But of course, the big question is, how does jobs play into all this? So yesterday, we had job openings. Job openings actually bumped up to 10.1 million job openings, which is a giant number, um, but a, a bump up, right? Now, it dropped a little bit from before, but it is a bump up from last month's data point. And this is really important because the Fed is watching inflation and jobs. And as long as jobs are strong and inflation persists, uh, you know, there could be some, some more hikes to come. So that was important. We also had ADP employment report come out today, which shows that we added 278,000 jobs for the last month. 
Again, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, but nonetheless, again, if jobs are strong, inflation's persisting, and the Fed also in their beige book kind of suggested that economics are still holding strong, what will they do? Will they hike? Uh, you know, all those signs point to point to yes. So obviously we'll continue to watch that. But what's going to be really important to pay attention to coming up next week, or I guess we'll cover it next week, but coming up tomorrow is the big jobs number, the non-farm payrolls, the U.S. employment report. So will that support the ADP employment report? Obviously, it remains to be seen. We'll wait until tomorrow to have a little bit more clarity on that. But remember, the ADP employment report is never been very accurate. They took it away for a while to revamp it, brought it back, and it still hasn't been accurate. So take that one with a bit of a grain of salt. But if tomorrow's jobs number does show that we added a lot of jobs, it certainly adds to the story here of uh, a possible another Fed hike in June. All right. With all that, what I want to cover here is our question of the week on the debt ceiling. Uh, we are getting closer and closer to what we call the X date or what they call the X date, I should say. Um, and maybe you know what this is, maybe you don't, but basically the X date is is when we technically run out of, of money. Um, in other words, when we would start to potentially default on things, um, when our credit ratings might be impacted, all those types of things. So this is really important. Um, and I want to share before I kind of get into what we're watching here and our, our take on this debt ceiling topic is that the reality is that a, if the debt ceiling does not get passed, if we hit that limit and we do default, it is a very big deal. Uh, you know, I don't want to downplay it. Now, all that said, I think the likelihood of that happening is is pretty slim. Not not impossible, but pretty slim. Um, right now, there's a bill that has passed the House and is now in the Senate. So if that passes, obviously, hopefully, um, that will help things. Now, obviously, we've got some spending challenges and some things that we need to to right the ship on. But nonetheless, nobody, uh, Republicans, Democrats, you know, nobody wants to see us default because it would have some big impacts. Could see Social Security impacted, Medicare, government benefits, salaries, you name it, right? So that's really important. Um, what I would share as far as some investment considerations with that is, again, if that happens, it's more likely that it's a shorter term thing than a longer term deal, plus, you know, some volatility around speculation there. So what I would share is just to, to kind of know what you hold. Um, in other words, if you do own government bonds, to own bonds that expire or mature, I should say, sorry, in June may not be the best place to be because that obviously if that if that date passes um that's where the challenge could could lie right so it's just important to maybe take a glimpse under the hood make sure you know what you own and how that might be impacted by this debt ceiling debacle uh now again i i think it is far less likely that we don't do something to either pass a, a higher debt ceiling kick the can whatever it might be but it is a big deal if it does occur. And so you just want to make sure that you're prepared, make sure that, you know, if that does happen, you have some risk management measurements in place. So um, obviously very, very important that X date that you keep hearing me talk about is supposed to be June 5th, based on Secretary Yellen's um, most recent uh, kind of analysis. But the reality is it's a little bit gray. It's, you know, obviously there's a lot of obligations, money coming in, taxes uh, happen, you know, to, to play a factor in that. So that may not be the exact date, but that's what they're saying right now is June 5th, which is only four days away. Uh, now, nonetheless, let's hope uh, things go through here on the Senate side with this bill that's in there right now. And we will certainly keep you up to date as we find out more on the debt ceiling. But in the meantime, hopefully that's helpful. Just some thoughts as this is becoming more and more of a, uh, you know, a household conversation. I uh, look forward to talking here next week. We'll see you next Thursday at three and we'll kind of break down any debt ceiling updates at that point, as well as uh, what is going on with the employment report tomorrow and how that impacts the Fed decision coming up. Have a great weekend. We will see you next Thursday at three.